Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. My name is Jask, and today's video focuses on a particular interaction I had during one of my Dungeons & Dragons games. If you follow me on any other social media, you'll probably recognize the character I'm drawing now, and have seen him appear in a couple of drawings and sketches and such. If you do not follow me, that is totally fine, and it's your lucky day because I'm going to talk about him as much as I can while I can. His name is Aracora Chalès, and he is an elf barbarian, and is also the younger brother of a character I played in this same campaign previously. He's a bounty hunter with a sort of knight slash chivalrous complex. He makes it his business to hunt people down who are wanted for one reason or another, and draws his own conclusions through investigation as to whether or not this person is actually guilty or if they deserve the kind of punishment they'll be getting once they're handed over. He has a strict no-killing policy towards his bounties, and he believes that everyone has a possibility to redeem themselves no matter what their crime is. As such, he very heavily researches the charges of whoever he's hunting and makes absolutely sure that he isn't accidentally turning in or otherwise harming an innocent person. Aracora has been doing this job for almost 150 years now, and to be honest, he's not very fond of the environment or of the other hunters. He's found a lot of them to be too quick to violence and to assume the guilt of the wanted, or just too quick to straight up kill people. Given the lessons he's learned about innocence and redemption and regret, he doesn't see eye to eye with many of his co-workers, and they're a lot colder than he is. He's only stayed in this profession so he can help as many people as he can, and he very much plans to do this for the rest of his life. The younger girl here is named Excelia, or Leah for short. She's one of the other characters in this campaign and I love her very, very much. She's a teenage half-elf warlock and fighter from one of the noble houses in our setting. She's the youngest in the party and this drawing takes place on the night of her 17th birthday. For some context as to why she looks so sad, the party recently dealt with a series of emotionally taxing events, to say the least. Most of us have either not fully come to terms with those feelings or refused to deal with any of them at all. In particular, Leah's family was framed and arrested for kidnapping a noble who had been missing, quote unquote, as well as being framed for some cultist activity also tied to those kidnappings. Even though the charges were false and we ended up mostly rectifying things, a lot of the townsfolk had openly turned on Leah and her family despite all the good that they had done for them, and outwardly believing the lies, overall agreeing that the entire family were cultists, Leah felt beyond betrayed, and before she even had a chance to come to terms with the betrayal of her own townsfolk, some questionable decisions that my previous character made came to light, and convinced the party that he had also betrayed them. He left the party directly afterwards, which only added to the pile of crap for Leah and the rest to try to deal with. She's been an angry little thing lately, and while the rest of us are as supportive as we can be given the circumstances, we also know that this is something that she's got to work out mostly on her own, so we've been giving her space. As I mentioned, this drawing is on the night of her birthday. The previous night had been very heated and several of us got into an argument about the trustworthiness of the ex-party member. It had the potential to be positive, but some incorrect use of instigation ended up souring the talk. So we woke up the following day and it was Leah's birthday, which kind of sucked. Aracora had been looking forward to her birthday for like two or three weeks, and he had made a point to ask for everyone's birth dates, 
and kept it a keen eye on the calendar to make sure that everyone was going to get to celebrate their special day. So with Leah's birthday finally upon us, he wasn't about to let the previous night's frustrations ruin his plans. So he got together with the rest of the party to brainstorm what they could do for her, and we had a whole birthday slash cake baking episode, and it was really, really fun. Leah ended up spending that day to herself anyway, and when she came back to us that evening to find everything we'd done, she was rather emotional about it. She hadn't expected us to do anything for her, and we even got her parents to teleport over on the fly to help us celebrate. She cried a couple of times, but it was like a sad, happy cry, you know? She was still really conflicted about her own struggles, but I think the gestures from the rest of us helped her a little bit. After presenting our homemade cake in her favorite flavor, she apologized for how she'd been acting lately and gave everyone a round of very meaningful and also sad hugs. She'd been fostering fear that we were only sticking around with her because we felt like we had to, not because we wanted to, and the affirmation that we were there because we, like, actually cared was what pushed her to tears. I liked the whole interaction so much that I couldn't pass up the opportunity to draw it. Aracora joined the party during a rather rough patch. Like I said, everyone was dealing with one form of trauma or emotional upheaval or another, and Leah in particular was having perhaps the hardest time out of anyone. Our bard was also in the middle of Sadness City, but they weren't really taking it out on anyone. Leah, though, had almost immediately started lashing out. Here was a girl who was steadfast in her ideals, always handling situations in the most polite and open-minded way she could, ways that benefited others as kindly as possible. She'd never lie or threaten or insult people, even if they deserved it, and she really was just a nice person. Then she felt betrayed by her entire town and party member and took out her confusion and frustration by pretty much doing the opposite of everything she used to do. She was rude both to strangers and those within the party, openly threatened to hurt people, and lied a couple of times. None of these things were behaviors that she would have thought about doing before. And to me, both as a player and as Aracora, nobody in the party seemed to be like, addressing Leah's potentially self-sabotaging behavior. While yes, she did need space to figure out feelings on her own, it had been almost three weeks in game and no one was trying to help guide her or even offer to listen to talk about what she was dealing with. So Aracora chose to take the initiative to do these things. He without getting into it, he has a lot of experience with regret, so Specifically, regrets that come out of using violence too readily. So seeing Leah openly threaten people who very well have no business being threatened like that really activated the instinct to try to impart knowledge and lessons to her before she ended up doing anything that she would seriously regret in the future. He's afraid of her falling down a bloody path, and he's further afraid that the inactive stances of the rest of the group are contributing to the possibility of it. He got into an argument at one point with the party about it, and expressed he was concerned about how, whenever danger presented itself, Leah was always at the head of every single charge. His point was more or less, regardless of how capable she is, she's still a child, and frankly, the child should not be the front of the army. This suggestion was not met very well for some reason, but Aracora is patient and understanding and decided not to push the subject. Despite the pushback from Leah and the party, he's been very patient with her anger and he still tries his best to steer her in the least violent direction. He's about as gentle as he can be about it, and let's be real. 
He's nearly 300 years old and he's learned a lot about the necessity of violence in his time, so naturally he's going to share those lessons with whoever he can, however he can. Honestly, I didn't intend for Aragora to act like such a nice and guiding figure. I also didn't intend for him to be this pretty. Both of these things were an accident. I started off with the idea of a physically fit dude who was extremely nice to nobility, chivalrous like a knight, and kind-hearted, who could also be hard and unyielding, who could exercise the perfect amount of intimidation to get what he needed when he needed it. While most of that has remained true, he's become similar to, like, a super protective version of a mentor who also happens to be super hot. I like the idea of him being a supportive pillar more than a teacher, but in different ways for everyone who chooses to invest in him. I hope that in the future his willingness to help the party with their struggles leaves a lasting impression on them, whatever that impression ends up being. However, that about wraps up everything that I can talk about in this speed paint video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me draw and listen to me ramble about two of my favorite characters. If you have anything that you would like to see me draw or any questions about what you have heard, please feel free to let me know and I will ramble about that stuff as well. Thank you once again for your viewing support and I will see you next time.